Welcome to the Blur channel, everybody. We are continuing our theme of where the DCEU could have been. I'm counting down all the projects and films that could have been released on our way as we anticipate The Flash coming to theaters in June on June 16th this year. So now we're at the point where I would have released Batman vs. Superman. And I actually have Batman vs. Superman coming out a year earlier in 2015. I'll preface this by saying I recently watched them, all three, Man of Steel, Batman vs. Superman, and Justice League. And I feel like one of the reasons why Batman vs. Superman didn't hit is because it felt like a sequel, not a crossover. And then Justice League also felt like a sequel rather than a crossover. Because if, if you just watch Man of Steel... Batman vs. Superman, and then Justice League, whether Zack Snyder's or the original version, all of them seem like they just kind of go into each other. So what DC did, they didn't create a crossover series. All they did was create a sequel, a sequel of movies. Because you introduced Wonder Woman in Batman vs. Superman, which I would not have done, because now that they introduced her, she feels like a character that came into a sequel movie. So now her movie seems more like a spinoff. And in the next one, she just appears like she's a character in the sequel, right? So those three movies felt like a trilogy rather than a crossover. And I realized that's partially why the DCEU kind of crashed and burned so badly because we're not as excited for Marvel seeing a character in another movie that we love crossing over with another one. It's completely different than a sequel. It's not the same. And so DC was trying to make a crossover, but instead all they made was a trilogy. And when you do that, you set yourself up for failure because you're trying to do one thing, but you accomplish something totally different. So anyway, we'll get into Batman versus Superman and how I would have done it. Now to me, my biggest issue with this film, and I know Batman versus Superman, first of all, the the idea itself in the comics has happened many times, and it's cool. The idea of Batman, if he's prepared, can he take down Superman? People always say, like, Batman will win as long as he's prepared. It's not like a brand new foreign concept. The problem is Superman's character, Clark Kent's character, even though Zack Snyder did him a little differently in Man of Steel, there is no believable way to have Batman and Superman in a fight without some kind of chemical agent or drastically altering Superman's personality. Because it's not about Batman. Like, Batman will fight anybody if he feels it is necessary and he has to do it. But Superman, because he can win every fight and because his character is so inherently good, you have to fundamentally change his character or introduce some kind of chemical agent. In the five times that Batman vs. Superman has happened in the comics, they fight because either Superman was going crazy because Poison Ivy kissed him with kryptonite lipstick or something like that. Or we're in an alternate reality and Superman is like raised by Russians and he becomes this Russian like dictator person and Batman has to fight him. Or in another comic um, or another movie, Joker gets Superman to kill Lois Lane and that makes him go crazy and want to end criminals and he just takes over the earth and Batman has to fight him then. So like if you want Superman's character to be the same, if you don't want to knock Superman all the way down, you have to use some kind of agent. And it might seem kind of lame for the whole conflict of Batman versus Superman to be based upon a chemical, but that's the only way that it works. You know, like Civil War worked with Captain America and Tony Stark, you know, because not only did Captain America's friend Bucky Winter Soldier kill Tony's parents, but also they were divided on the accords. The, uh, the world was trying to decide, hey, you guys need to sign this. And Cap was like, no, I'm not going to. And like they almost could have done something similar in Batman versus Superman, but there wasn't enough backstory for us to play off of. And so if Batman versus Superman is how I want them to meet and initially come together, then I'm using a chemical agent. And so let me get into the plot and then that will make a lot more sense. So at the beginning, at the end of The Batman, we saw Lex Luthor talking to Edward Nigma, who was actually the Riddler, to Patrick Parker, who was actually the Riddler, and they turned kryptonite red. Now in the comics and even in some of the TV shows, red kryptonite makes a Kryptonian very aggressive and angry and out of their personality trait right? So this would make sense because Lex Luthor is like, I don't want to just kill Superman and have him die a martyr. I want to ruin his entire image. So I found this thing that can deteriorate Kryptonian cells. Great. Let me see if I can alter them, if I can manipulate them. So working with Edward Nigma, Patrick Parker, who is a master in chemicals, because he's also a forensic scientist, they're able to successfully turn the kryptonite red and they set a trap to where Superman runs into it. 
So now Superman, so like in that episode, there was an episode of Supergirl where she ran to Red Kryptonite, which is kind of what this is based off of. And the effects were kind of slow burning. Like she slowly started getting more aggressive, speaking out against people until it just led to like outright crimes. So that would kind of be happening in this movie. We would slowly see Superman's personality deteriorate and go less and less unhinged. And, um, and if you're wondering why Patrick Parker willing to work with Lex Luthor, it's because Luthor has promised him, we're going to have Superman kill Batman. And that's going to ruin his image. And Batman's going to die because Riddler still does need Batman to die so he can continue his war on the corrupt in Gotham. So in this case, Lex Luthor sought out Edward Nigma because Lex Luthor actually wants Batman to fight Superman. Why? We'll get into that in a second. But anyway, so while Superman's personality and everything is um, deteriorating and becoming more aggressive, rather than introducing Wonder Woman in this movie, I would have introduced Barry Allen as another forensic scientist. So Central City, Gotham, Metropolis, they're not too far from each other. You know, they know each other's police stations. And so he's renowned as a forensic scientist. And so that connection to Barry Allen would have come from Silas Stone of Star Labs. Because Star Labs has networks in Metropolis, in Central City, and in Gotham. And so Barry Allen works out of Star Labs as it works as a forensic scientist out of the Star Labs in Central City. So he's met Silas Stone from time to time as they go around because I think Silas Stone would be a really good founder for Star Labs. Since Superman is an extraterrestrial, basically one of the crimes that he stops or something, it goes one of the crimes goes wrong and Silas Stone is kind of brought in to investigate and they're like, hey, Superman acted out and this was weird. We don't really know what's going on. So he brings in Barry Allen to investigate the scene. And when they investigate the scene, they start to find that he's leaving these like little red debris and they realize Superman's been affected by some kind of agent. And it takes them a while to figure this out. But while we see Superman's personality deteriorating, that's when they realize he's been infected by something. Now we get to the point where, so once Superman's personality deteriorates to a point where he's unwilling to reason, he just acts out aggressively and just starts fighting, that's when Lex Luthor and Riddler know it's time. So Riddler is going to leave a riddle that's really easy to crack, but make it seem like Batman has kidnapped Martha Kent, right? So no pictures, no, I'm holding Martha in a place where you can't see her even though there are windows, so obviously the place isn't lined with lead. None of that. Basically, Superman is going to think that Batman kidnapped Martha Kent, but because he's been affected by the Red Kryptonite, he's not going to think straight. He's going to go straight to aggression and try to kill Batman. So meanwhile, Batman's been involved with the investigation because Lex Luthor actually secretly fed some of this information to Bruce Wayne because he knows both their identities. He just figured it out. And Lex Luthor wants Batman to kill Superman. Because Lex Luthor knows that deep down, Clark Kent, Superman, is a good person. But deep down, Batman, Bruce Wayne, is not. And he will kill him if necessary. And that iconic line, I thought it'd be cool if we have Lex Luthor say it. Instead of Bruce Wayne saying it about Clark Kent, we have Lex Luthor saying it to one of his compatriots or whatever about why he orchestrated this conflict to have Batman kill Superman in the first place. So Riddler thinks they're getting Superman to kill Batman. Lex Luthor knows that Batman will kill Superman. And so Riddler is thinking that Batman won't be ready when Superman attacks him. But Lex Luthor is going to be leaving clues for Bruce Wayne to follow, as well as he's going to allow Bruce to steal kryptonite from him, just like in Batman vs. Superman. So what's going to happen is once Superman thinks that Batman has kidnapped Martha Kent, He's going to go crazy and try to attack Batman. And Martian Manhunter is going to come in and try to stop him. And Martian Manhunter is almost going to die. Like, he's going to get beat by Superman pretty badly. And by this point, Batman's like, there's nothing left to do. And he's going to start attacking Superman with kryptonite weapons. It's going to make Superman mad, but he's also going to be hurt. And so they're going through this fight. And it'd be kind of similar to the Batman versus Superman fight. But Batman's not really trying to kill Superman. He's just trying to subdue him. But he's getting to the point where he's running out of kryptonite stuff to use. And he's like, I got to kill this guy before he kills me. Meanwhile, Barry Allen and his team at Star Labs are going to be working really, really late to try and figure out, okay, what was Superman infected with and how can we reverse it? And then at that point in the movie, Barry's going to be working late and Silas is going to have gone home or be in the other room, either one. And Silas is just going to be in the other room and... A bolt of lightning is going to strike through the roof and hit Barry into a batch of chemicals, which turns him into Flash. And this will be right about when Silas Stone develops the antidote. 
And so then they're going to see that Batman and Superman are going at it. And Barry's like, we got to get this to Batman before he has to kill Superman. And Sal Stone is concerned that they're not going to get there in time. Barry Allen, having just been exposed to the Speed Force, can obviously get there in time. And so Barry Allen is going to start running to his car, but he's going to get there so fast, he's going to realize, oh my God, what? And he's going to start running and realize he can run at insanely fast speeds. So that's how Barry Allen becomes the Flash. And he runs the antidote over to Batman, who's able to cure Superman. So then once Superman wakes up, realizes everything that he's done, Batman explains that they need to go stop the people that are responsible for this. So then Batman's going to leave and track down Riddler, and that's when Batman and Riddler are finally going to have the confrontation, and Batman's going to call him Patrick Parker, because Batman's going to have realized that this was Patrick Parker. And um, they're going to have their fight, their confrontational fight. At the same time, Lex Luthor is going to appear in a huge war suit with some kryptonite weapons, and attack Superman. Because Superman was going to go find Lex Luthor, but Lex Luthor finds him instead. And I think what would be cool about this is because Superman has just recovered, so we know he's okay. But now Lex Luthor is attacking him, so Superman's going to try to defend himself while Lex Luthor is in this war suit. Eventually, press and media outlets are going to pour in, and so Lex Luthor is going to do the fight in a way so that it looks like Superman's gaining the upper hand, and Lex Luthor is kind of losing. And so... All of these outlets create the story that Lex Luthor is trying to stop Superman from going crazy, and that Lex Luthor is actually the hero, because all they had just seen was Superman commit these crimes and be all aggressive. So then Superman is going to realize, there's nothing really left for me to do, I can't defeat Lex Luthor and expose him for the fraud he is, because I don't have the proof necessary. So Superman is going to realize that I can't defeat Lex Luthor right here and still clear my name because I need to have evidence and prove that it was not me doing those terrible things. So he's going to stop and turn himself in. But everyone sees that Lex Luthor is the hero. So Superman is put into a Red Sun jail, just like General Zod was in the first Man of Steel. After Batman defeats Riddler, Bruce Wayne is going to get you know his army of lawyers to gather evidence to prove that Superman was under the influence of a chemical that was put on him. However, all the evidence has been erased off of the servers. No one can track it down. Silas Stone testifies. Barry Allen testifies. But other people testimony to the things that Superman did, and no one can find proof that he was affected by these chemicals because all the proof has been eliminated. All the proof has disappeared. So then Superman is forced to stay in jail. And it kind of would take Superman still out of the picture for the beginning of Justice League. And he's tried and sentenced to prison for his crimes. And so now we get to, of course, the vital end credit scene. And here we're going to have Silas Stone is working in his lab. And the camera's going to position in such a way to where we can kind of see an object that looks similar to the mother box that they introduced in Aquaman just sitting in his lab, in the Star Labs lab. And then Silas Stone is going to get a phone call that says, hey, you got to come down to the hospital right now. Your wife and son were in an accident. And he's going to freak out, throw his phone down, and run out. And then the camera would pan onto that mother box, and then that would be it. And so what would be cool is this is obviously setting up Cyborg, setting up Victor Stone. Some of the audience might know that, some might not, but this is the painfully obvious setup of Justice League because it's going to pick up right after Silas Stone goes to the hospital to see his son. Again, thank you all for listening. This is just my take on how I would have done Batman versus Superman. I would have done the plot points. Leave your thoughts down below. Let me know what you guys think if this wouldn't work. I'm actually very excited for the Flash movie. I still think it's going to be good. I just, uh, I thought it was very interesting to see all the different places that the DCEU could have been. Anyway, thank you for rocking with me. Until next time, Blurds, take care.